Hi everybody, all my followers, welcome to another video. So, the video today is on a 2006 Reno Scenic. Uh, I believe this is the 1.6 petrol, uh, not really important to be honest. And this car came to me with uh, two problems. One, uh, the dash was faulty, they replaced the dash, and now the mileage is wrong, so the mileage needs to be adjusted. Not sure if there's any configurations needed as well. Um, it looks okay, but we'll we'll go that we'll go through that on a separate video. The the video here today is going to be for the following. So I'm going to start the engine. So engine on. And what I wanted to see is that there is, as you can see, there is no parking brake. There is no parking brake light in there. And if I pull my parking brake, nothing happens. It doesn't engage or disengage. Okay, it does nothing. And when I try to drive, uh, the park is engaged. And it doesn't come off. Okay. Now it says check parking brake. And in a minute we'll start to come up with some faults for the parking brake as well. Now the, when the car came, it came driving so the park was disengaged. Don't know if that was done on the emergency uh, release in the boot. Um, but when they dropped the car to me, I was told uh, the, uh, the the handbrake sometimes it would work sometimes it wouldn't so at this moment in time I don't know if my problem is going to be at the back on the actually parking brake module or if it's going to be something with my switch in here so that's what we're going to do first is going to is going to be to plug the maxi the maxi seats and hopefully it will be enough for this job and we'll go from there okay and we will be going straight to parking brake That is not looking good. Oops. Oh, there is communication. So, read codes. Okay. Uh, okay, active. Uh, no UCH multiplex signal. All this following can be producing the signal or can connection fault. Uh, manual command signal incoherence. Okay, multiplex network, warning light circuit short circuit to earth, brake on switch short circuit to 12 volts. Okay, let's 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 do the following here. Let's erase all this. Ignition on engine off. Come on. Ignition on. Engine off, yes, delete. And it's on. No. Okay. Read codes. Okay. Okay, so we have a multiplex network fault here. Uh, it doesn't really say as now is the UHC it says the computer does not receive any multiplex signals uh, or two computers do not enter into dialogue with the parking brake. Hmm. Which computers are that? Mm hmm. Okay. Let me check. I have communications in there as they have been replacing that make sure they haven't done I'm not sure if the configuration is going to be right either let me see what codes we have in here 
oil level circuit, not really worried with that. Okay, uh, UCH, let's go to the UCH. And we should have done something on the parking brake module before we come to here. But we'll go back and we'll check that. Memory, memory, memory. So there's nothing here. Uh, live data. Let's put all signals. Let me see here. If there is anything. I don't think it's going to have nothing to do with it. Okay, let's go back to parking brake. My key just ran off. It is live data. Actually, uh, yeah, live data, why not? Uh, all signals. All signals. So, parking brake inactive, manual control, release switch, release. Inactive, inactive, manual control, inactive, door open, switch is open, manual, manual gearbox, level position, reverse skin engaged, customer mode, blah, blah, blah. Okay. What? That must be. Oh, bloody updates. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so we are back here and what I wanted to look at or what we're going to look at is so manual control release switch is released so I'm not touching it redundant application switch position manual control applica uh, application switch so I'm going to pull just this handle as if I'm pulling the parking brake and I believe that the manual control application perhaps should change Okay, so as you can see, I'm pulling it all the way out. Nothing's happening. Oh, it happened now. Look at that. Oh, it's happening now. Oh, what's going on? See, I was pulling it. It was doing nothing. Now it's doing it. So, what now when I press the bottom one? Which one is the bottom one? So which one is going to be this one? When you press this top one. Should that be the redundant application switch or something like that? Hmm. It stops responding to the live data again. Okay, let me try something else here. Oh, this is the same stuff. Same thing here. Oh. 
see if, if I have anything. So 11 volts per meter. Uh, one end of the so is 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 engaged. That's it. Let's go back. Don't know why it shows that uh, acceleration act. Um, that uh, acts, uh, throttle pedal position, but okay, let's go to active tests. Let's see if I can release my parking brake from here. Let's escape that. Okay, show me all data. Okay. To release and is released have you heard that I don't know if you have heard that guys but it is released now I really hope you guys have heard that that's gonna apply select all data come on I said all data Okay, that's if that's okay. Okay, let's go in to apply the brake. Hmm, nothing happened now. Why nothing happened? Hmm. Okay, I'll have all these codes, blah 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 blah. That's absolutely fine. I don't care about that. Okay, so we managed to release the parking brake. Let's see what happens now if I start the engine. Ah, it's engaged already. Crap. It's engaged straight away. All data is released. I can move the car now. Okay, it's good. Okay. Now, see if I pull it here. Now it doesn't work. It doesn't engage, okay. However, when I pull it here, nothing changes there. Okay, I think I might have an issue, I might have other issues here, uh, especially um, uh, looking at this here. We might have other issues, but for now, For now, I think I'll be manual signal currents. I think I'm gonna look at my button. Uh, that's the first thing I'm gonna look at. See how my button is, because I think it's a problem with it. So, checking the switch, visually everything looks pretty much okay. And now we're going to measure the switch, uh, make sure everything's good. So, as you look at the plug like that, facing this way, you have left hand side bottom pin, that one in there, right at the bottom, pin number one, then it goes all the way to six, and then you start at the top of the back, seven, all the way down to 12. Okay, so what we're going to measure, let me put this in a way you can see my, oh, you can't see it anymore, well, you can see the thingy here, it's gonna be tricky this one, hold on a second. Okay, let's gonna measure the the switch. So I have this setup here uh, with these two females, so or males, so I can put them on the I can put them on the on the pins of the switch, and let's gonna measure this. So according to my paperwork, pin number nine. So uh, seven, eight. Nine, so pin seven and nine 
with the switch in the resting position, just like that, I should have 2700 ohms, so 2.7k ohms, which is good. Then, when I pull the switch, it should go down to 172, so 167, 68, I don't think it's that far. And then when you press the stop one, it should stay on 172. And it stays on 172. Okay. Next test is going to be pin 10 and pin number 2. So, 10 and pin 2. Oops. Pin 2. Rest position should be open line, as it is. Then it should go to zero ohms when I pull the handle. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4 ohms, and it should stay on zero when I press this release button. There it is. And the last test is going to be pin number four. Hold on. Pin number. Two and pin number four, that's the way it is. Pin two and pin four should be open line um, when in the resting position. When I pull this one, it should stay on zero. And when I press this one, it should go down to zero. There it is. So, so far, looks like there's nothing wrong with my switch so uh, switch looks good next test is going to be check my plug at least the bits I can check ground powers uh, and that's pretty much it really so let's gonna check this okay so pin number one it's going to be and just make sure I think they are marked here actually so okay oh sorry it's marked in there so pin number one if you face the plug like this with the tab to the left pin number one is going to be my pin right here at the bottom and uh, Pin number one is now in use, pin number two should be my ground. So ground, uh, let me see. Number six should be voltage. So number six. I should have 12 volts. And I have, yep, 12.19 volts, so that's good. Uh, sorry guys, I'm not showing you that. So 12.27 uh, Then we have number seven. Oh dear. Oh dear What I'm seeing there Is that gonna be is that gonna be what I think it's going to be Okay, just hold a second. I'll get back to you. Hold on. Uh, so just uh, Okay, number 12 should be voltage as well, but when you get your lights on by the looks of it. Yeah, that's it, 12 volts when I turn my lights on. So is the illumination, 12 volts, so when I turn the lights off, it goes to zero volts. Okay, so that's all good. All the other wires, all the other pins that are used are connections with the modules and other stuff. With the module at the back and other stuff. But, there's one thing in there. Okay guys, I need to show you this because it's interesting. So I, I just removed the battery and that's when I removed the battery, all these just fell off. So this was all loose. Look at the front control module, which is supposed to be getting voltage from there was not even in place um, the stuff unplugged I don't know if this is oh no no that's not plugged but this is how it is oh dear let's kind of plug everything the way it should and go from there 
Okay, and just came back, put everything together in there, everything tied up properly. Came here, did a quick uh, uh, test, let me show you. Uh, did an auto scan and I, I only have faults on the parking brake and instrument panel. Instrument panel we saw already earlier that was something for the oil pressure switch or sensor whatever that was but as you can see there's no other faults anywhere okay so all these faults that we have here for communications let me open that okay guys I, uh, I think uh, I got interrupted uh, but I think I was about to show you the codes I have now um, and as you're gonna see I have all these codes uh, some memory codes here, uh, but active codes, I have two codes, uh, manual command signal incurrence and break on switch short, short circuit to 12 volts. So all these communication faults, they are gone. I only have these ones now. Now, as we have seen on my uh, switch, it looked like it was okay. I mean, all the measurements, they, they fulfilled what they should do. Um, they, they, they all match what they should be and um, so I can have a short circuit somewhere well I don't know really uh, hmm. we might have a wiring problem we might have a bad module uh, or uh, okay so I'm a little bit and now I don't know why but the light in there is flashing which was not doing it before, so... Mm. Okay, let me see what I'm gonna do next. Okay guys, and uh, I would say four or five days later, we are back on the Scenic. And first of all, last clip, uh, I was pointing at two arrows only. It was three, one for something with the multiplex network, blah, 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 blah. I think it's all... Um, related anyway uh, and uh, and I think I know why sometimes the button worked sometimes it didn't and obviously now since I've started to record this video I never actually managed to get it to work but basically um, and, and let's go back a little bit on the video uh, when I said at some point I think I was measuring that uh, plug in there voltages and stuff and uh, I said something like oh dear is this gonna be what I think it's gonna be so the reason why I said that was because on a PDF file I was looking at, which my laptop just broke and I can't even use the laptop to show you now. But anyway, um, on on the PDF I was looking at with all the pin assignment and all that stuff, uh, it was telling me that the three wires, uh, the three signal wires that runs from the button, obviously to the back of the car, uh, to the module, they on there on that PDF was saying they would go through. Uh, socket C C2 and at the time I was trying to record and think at the same time um, and, I, and I was pretty sure it was not C2 but I was not 100% sure anyway on these days off um, I, well not off I've been working and all sorts of uh, but anyway um, in the meantime I had a little bit before the laptop broke and I had a look at some diagrams proper diagrams for this car I hope and um, the signal wires, they, don't, they go through a, a plug, but the plug is actually R2, R from Romeo, R2. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for a video that I've done some time ago, because I think this car is going to be suffering from the exact same problem. If it is, um, I'm not even going to show you the repair, how to, to repair it, because it's all on that video, so you just need to go there and watch that little bit of the video. And, and um, I will actually leave two links. I'm going to leave a link uh, for the video complete and I will leave a second link uh, just for where I start to do the repair. But let me show you what is the problem or at least what I think the problem is. Let me show you this. And I'm, I'm here sat down in between the seats. Let me open the door. So plug R2 guys is right here underneath this seat. And let me show you this. Oh dear. See all this water? Look right there. So if it's water here, 
guess how that plug in there is going to be. So I think that's my problem. I think there is water in there. That plug is completely rusted and obviously started to fail. And all these communication problems, all this stuff uh, is because of that. Also, let me show you another problem, uh, which was actually what kind of even inclined me more to think that my problem is going to be that. So let me show you this without stopping the video. So let me turn ignition on. Oh dear. So, uh, eight seconds and the ignition should come on. There we go. And should stay on. Let me show you this. So, electric windows. It's working fine. Electric window this side is working fine. Electric windows at the back. They don't work. Neither one or the other. Look. If I go to the button at the back, let me see if I can do all this like this. If I go here, doesn't work. Can you see over there on the door? Let me show you this. Someone already been yeah, that one doesn't work either. So yeah, no electric windows at the back. So my friends, I think that's what's gonna be my problem. It's gonna be that socket in there, that plug. But let's take everything out and uh, and we'll go from there. Hey guys, and I think my guess was uh, indeed right, so I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. I don't want to touch too much the, the socket just yet. But look at this. Absolutely soaked. I will try. I don't want to touch too much. But look at that in there. Oh dear. See, I don't want to touch too much because I'm going to start to break everything. And I want to make sure I take everything uh, I can look. But let me see if I can just uh, pull it out maybe here. Oh dear, look, look, can you hear this? As I, oh, look, can you hear this? As I touch this plug, the center are locking. I think I'm going to disconnect the battery first and then we'll take this out. Okay, battery disconnected, unplug this and look at that. Look, one of the pins even came with the plug looking there. <laughs> And obviously underneath, you can guess what's going to happen. Uh, luckily on this car, guys, is not a lot of wires. Quite lucky on that. This plug is nearly empty. Uh, the side that comes from the front of the car. It's only a few wires, so it's going to be a quick... Uh, yeah, the other one goes back here, so it should be quick, hopefully. But let's going to get repaired and see what happens. Okay, guys, one last view before I start the repair. And look at that. That that looks nasty. It looks really nasty. Don't you agree guys? Every single wire is still in place, so we're gonna do this very careful so I don't need diagrams. Because my laptop is broken. Um so we can just connect wire by wire like I did last time. And I'm going to do this entire process without taking you through. Like I said, I'm going to leave a link in the description below with my other video where I start this same repair. Well, not, not this one, but a very similar repair. And then I think I'll come back for the results, really. Okay, guys. Uh, and after messing about with a few things until I find out what I find out, which I will take you through in a second. Uh, the problem is sorted, uh, at least what the car came with, so there's no more alarms for the parking brake. You have the airbag light on because the seat is now in place, but that's all done in there. And what I wanted to see is the following now. So I've deleted all the codes uh, because there's still some codes in there for the brake. But look at that. So I'm going to pull it. So it's actually uh, engaged, as you can see. So let's go and disengage. Don't know if you can hear. Parking brake off, and the parking brake is off. Uh, let me see if I can show you. Okay. It's off. 
And now I'm gonna pull it on. Parking brake on. And obviously I can't move anymore. Oh, actually I can because it's the automatic one. Okay, sorry. I thought I couldn't move. Yeah, so it's on. And as soon as I try to drive, it comes off. Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is, is resolved. Unfortunately, I still have no electric windows other than the driver's side, which works fine, and that one uh, on that side. Uh, but that one on, on this one, it works on the auto. So I press all the way down, and it goes all the way down. Press all the way up, and it goes all the way up. That one only works on the first on the first uh, sort of uh, press. If you press all the way down, as you're gonna see in there, if I press all the way down, it just stop. Okay, so it goes. If I press all the way, sorry guys, so oops. If I press all the way up, the window stops. Now, when I go here, guys, and this is why I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do nothing. When I've got here, I've opened this door. As you can see, there's more buttons in there that I'll show you earlier. And this motor controller was missing. Uh, I have these ones, I've tried, still not, doesn't work. But then I came here to the front, and I want you to look at this. This is why this window doesn't work in automatic. Look inside there. Sorry guys, look inside there. Someone has been botching this up, and I'm not gonna touch now, because I don't know what's been done, and I already wasted, not wasted, but I have already spent a, a fair amount of time uh, repairing this loom. Just gonna wrap this up, but the brake is working. Uh, I've checked all the lights at the back. Uh, everything is working. The central locking is working. Uh, the lights on the doors, like that, they are working. So basically, everything is working apart from the electric windows. It might be those little controllers. Uh, one was missing. I don't even know if there's one on this side, uh, on this door here now, because that one was missing. I don't know about this door. So whoever has been doing this, it can carry on now because I have for hours here now tried to get all the bits together I don't know guys um, I don't think I'm gonna touch anymore uh, so but for what the car came with guys that's sorted we have parking brake working everything's working so that's it for this video for now I guess um, if the guy really wants me to look at these windows uh, I will but it's not gonna be a cheap fix now so it will be up to him um, so if 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 it comes back, then I will take it through possibly. Uh, but for now, guys, this was for the parking brake. Problem solved, and that's it for this video, guys. Um, I really hope there's some information here you guys are gonna appreciate. You're gonna find it useful. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you do have any questions, any comments, please put them below. And like always, thanks for watching.